Hi, this is Ron Sipsick, and this is the fourth part of a four-part four series on expenditure line analysis. In this particular segment, we're going to take a look at how an increase in autonomous expenditures leads to an expansion in GDP in the short run, and perhaps even a reduction in the cyclical unemployment rate. We begin the analysis by developing a scenario where interest rates have fallen. So small r here stands for interest rates, real interest rates, inflation adjusted interest rates. Notice that interest rates have fallen and that has motivated households to spend more, to borrow more and spend more, and it's motivated businesses to borrow and invest more. And notice that both of these changes in spending are cases of an increase in A, or aut autonomous expenditures as these expenditures increased due to a factor other than GDP. R is a non-GDP factor. It's a factor other than GDP that boosts spending. Well, any factor other than GDP that boosts spending is an autonomous factor. GDP is being held constant early in the analysis. All right, so we'll go ahead and dig right into the application. And I'm going to scroll. Uh, the model up where we can see it more easily and there it is now what we're going to do is we're going to move the expenditure line upward so let's go ahead and do that and this will be a parallel shift and we'll shift the line up to here I'll we'll come right by the 45 degree angle there and we're going to label this new line C Whoop, sorry about that. Erase that. We're going to label that new line C plus I plus G plus X minus M2. All right. Now, this is going to be A2 down here. And let's say that this is movement up to 900. So a modest but significant, modest but significant increase in A. We'll learn later in the course that uh, the Federal Reserve System, our central bank, has the ability to push interest rates down. And one of the reasons it pushes interest rates down is to stimulate macroeconomic activity. And so the effect of this, in this case, is to push the expenditure line up. And now the macroeconomy is operating at a point above the 45 degree line. So if we read across, we see that spending spending is increased by $100. If if this or excuse me by $50. If this is a $50 increase down here, this has to be a $50 increase here. Remember that we're talking about a parallel shift. So what is going on at point B? At point B, GDP is now less than TPE. I'm going to bring that over here uh, and actually talk about it. So if GDP, let me, let me flip it around. If TPE is greater than GDP, which is the case, TPE is now what? TPE is now 3,450. Remember that TPE was at 3,400. Now it's 3,450. That's greater than 3,400. Well, what are we running? We're running an unplanned inventory reduction. In other words, inventory levels are falling unexpectedly. Well, if inventory levels are falling unexpectedly due to strong demand, this is strong demand, what's going to happen? Businesses will increase their output rate, and as they do that, GDP will begin to expand. All right, so at point B, the economy is strong. Spending is strong, which means point B is not stable. GDP is going to expand. Expand to where? Well, up here to point C. This is the new equilibrium point. So we'll just go ahead and dot that down. 
So GDP is going to increase and move towards GDP too. Well, that increase in GDP will push spending up even further. And now spending will be up to P TPE2. Notice that we move from A to B, B to C. So in the end, we've moved from A to C. So the distance we moved GDP has to be the same total distance that we move TPE. However, remember the sequencing is important here. TPE moves first, the increase in autonomous spending, then the increase in GDP begins to occur, and that ends up pushing up spending even further. Okay, now we can actually calculate the new amounts of GDP just as we did in segment three. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to move the model up and out of our way for a moment. So let's do that. And again, we'll use the method that we've been using. Uh, if you take A2 and divide it by MPS, you get GDP2. Well, our new A is what? Our new A is 900 divided by what? Point 0.25, that's going to equal 3,600. So this is the new GDP level. So let's go ahead and put that on our diagram. And we're going to write 3,600 down here. And we're going to write 3,600 over here. So what happened here? There was an increase in spending of what? 50. That pushed GDP up by what? 200. And that's going to feed back and push up spending another 150. So $50 increase in autonomous spending leads to a $200 increase in GDP, which leads to a further $150 increase in the level of total planned expenditures. So once again, let's go ahead and write that out. We did that in segment three for our recession. Let's do it in segment four here for our expansion. So the increase in A of what? Plus 50 leads to what? An increase in GDP of what? Plus 200, which leads to a further increase in TPE of 150. And again, remember the change in A is an increase in total planned expenditures. It's just not caused by GDP. This was caused by what? The lower interest rates. So this is autonomous. And again, remember the mechanism here, the increase in GDP leads to what? An increase in Y, which leads to an increase in C, which leads to the increase in TPE. Okay? So again, you have this relationship of 1 to 4. The change in A led to a much larger change in GDP. This is plus 1 here, plus $1 here, plus $4 here. So once again, every dollar change in A led to a $4 change in GDP in this particular example. All right, so let me go ahead and move up back up to the picture, and we will uh, provide our closing comments on this. So lower interest rates are expansionary. That's the point that lower interest rates pushed up spending levels in the short term and boosted GDP. This is called an expansion. An expansion. And this expansion is usually going to be accompanied by lower unemployment. Now, unemployment can only go so low. 
Uh, we always have frictional unemployment. We always have structural unemployment in the system. In the United States, the unemployment rate even during the best of economic times has historically been in the four to five percent range but um, if unemployment is above that level uh, then an expansion can actually push that unemployment down to the natural rate which is the frictional rate and the structural rate put together so uh, expansions are good GDP expands unemployment may fall and uh, the economic pie gets larger Okay, and again, let's 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 just make note that this expansion was caused by what strong aggregate demand, and in this case, the strong aggregate demand was caused by uh, lower interest rates. All right, this concludes our fourth segment uh, on the expenditure line model. Notice how the model has allowed us to to very clearly show uh, economic fluctuations. Um, movements in GDP over time, fluctuations in GDP over time. Now again, most of the time the U.S. economy is expanding. Most of the time the U.S. economy is uh, um, growing. That has been our history. We've uh, grown at roughly three and a half percent since we've begun collecting economic data on the US system. So for many, many years, the US system has grown uh, robustly at three and a half percent. But if you look at our growth rate over time, it's not been linear. Okay, so let me just quickly wrap this up with a, with a little picture here. So if you look at the growth rate in real GDP, sorry about that, let me, let me get rid of those marks. If you look at the growth rate in real inflation adjusted GDP over what? Over time. This is time series data. You're going to see that it's it, this, you know, this is fluctuated. Now, the the trend, of course, is upward. You can see here that there, if you fit a line to this data, there's an upward trend in the data. Okay, the trend, the trend is upward. And this represents economic growth. And this is long-run growth in real GDP. But there have been these downturns. There have been these downturns and there have been these upturns. So what we're looking at is why does GDP fluctuate around this long-run trend? Now we would expect that this get to get, if this is truly the trend, we would expect this to get back up over the trend at some point, or it's not the trend. So the question we've been looking at in the last two episodes uh, is we were first looking at these things in episode th three, we were looking at these downturns, these recessions. Okay, why do you get these downward movements in the system? And we basically pointed to weak demand. Weak demand leads to what? Unplanned inventory buildups that cause GDP to contract. Here in this particular segment, we're studying these upward movements and uh, you know why the economy moves up over time and in the short run this is going to be caused by strong demand uh, with lower interest rates and other factors uh, contributing to these expansionary movements alright well this concludes uh, the last lesson in our expenditure line analysis